Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. On India's PM Modi urges G20 to focus on unsustainable debt. EU delegates in India pay tribute to Ukraine victims on first anniversary of Russian invasion. And Sherpas in Nepal celebrate traditional New Year gear up for expeditions. And now for all the details, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday called for the G20 to focus on the world's most vulnerable citizens and focus on unsustainable debt as finance ministers of member nations and central bank governors gathered for a two-meeting in Bengaluru city. The meeting is the first major event under India's G20 presidency. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday called for the G20 countries to focus on the world's most vulnerable citizens by creating an inclusive agenda to win back the confidence of the world. In a video message at the beginning of the two-day meeting of G20 finance ministers and central bank governors, Modi said the financial viability of many countries is being threatened by unsustainable debt. Trust in international financial institutions has eroded partly because the lenders had been slow to reform themselves. The meeting near Bengaluru city is the first major event of India's G20 presidency and coincided with the first anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which Modi alluded to. Food and energy security have become major concerns across the world. Even the financial viability of many countries is threatened by unsustainable debt levels. Trust in international financial institutions has eroded. This is partly because they have been slow to reform themselves. India's presidency of the bloc comes as neighbouring South Asian countries, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Pakistan have been seeking bailouts from the IMF due to an economic slowdown caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the Ukraine conflict. Russian President Vladimir Putin had ordered thousands of troops into Ukraine on a special military operation seeking to disarm Kyiv and halt NATO expansion on February 24 last year. The biggest land war in Europe since World War II has killed thousands, displaced millions, left cities and villages in ruins and disrupted the global economy. Russia suffered three major battlefield reverses in Ukraine last year, but still controls nearly a fifth of the country. We have a hope that 2023 will be the year of win and Ukraine will win this war and the principles of democracy and freedom will prevail. Exercising India's right to reply during a session of the United Nations General Assembly, Indian diplomat Pratik Mathur on Thursday slammed Pakistan and advised Islamabad to look at its track record as a state that provides safe havens to terrorists with impunity. He criticized Pakistan for bringing up the unrelated Jammu and Kashmir issue and termed it as regrettable. India's most wanted Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba's deputy chief, Abdul Rahman Makki, was designated as a global terrorist by the UN Resolve in January. India had Resolve. made listings of a total of five names of Pakistan-based terrorists, a top priority of its UNSC tenure during 2021-22. Each of these five names were initially placed on technical hold by China, while all other 14 members of the council agreed to their listing. In the past... Pakistan has only to look at itself and its own track record as a state that harbors and provides safe havens to terrorists and does so with impunity. Such uncalled for provocation is particularly regrettable 
and certainly misplaced at a time when after two days of intense discussions, we have all agreed that the path of peace can be the only path forward to resolve conflict. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves held by the central bank rose by 66 million US dollars to 3.2 billion dollars in the week ending February 17, it said on Thursday. While its total liquid foreign reserves stood at $8.73 billion, Pakistan is facing economic turmoil with a balance of payment prices and the foreign exchange reserves are only enough to cover three weeks of imports. The government this month raised fuel prices by nearly rupees 22 and passed a mini budget to impose additional taxes to raise 170 billion rupees to win an IMF deal worth $1 billion. The approval is expected by this month. The move has irked the business community. غریب آدمی کی پہنچ سے جو ہے ہر چیز دور ہو گئی ہے آپ غزب دیکھیں اس بات کے کہ مرگی کا گوشت ساڑھے سات سو روپے کلو بک رہا ہے ان کو خدا کا خوف نہیں ہے کیا کر رہے ہیں تمام بیٹھے ہوئے ادارے نہیں دیکھ رہے ہیں محکم میں نہیں دیکھ رہے ہیں آنکھیں بند کی ہیں یہ صرف اور صرف اپنی کرپشنیں بچا رہے ہیں ایک دوسرے کے یہ سب ایک دوسرے کے کبڑے اتارنے میں لگے ہیں موونگ آن Afghanistan's Taliban-led administration has established a consortium of companies from four countries, including Russia, Iran, and Pakistan, to create a multi-million dollar investment plan focusing on power and infrastructure in the war torn nation, the acting Commerce Minister Nuruddin Azizi has said. The business delegates will arrive in Kabul in the spring, starting around March, to look into projects worth up to $1 billion, Azizi said. Apart from mining and power projects, they were eyeing the possibility of building a new tunnel to replace the historic Salang Tunnel and a project to divert water from Panjshir to the capital as well as the main highway connecting Kabul to western Herat province. Afghanistan's economy has been severely hampered since the Taliban took over in 2021, sparking the international community to cut most development funding and enforce sanctions on the banking sector. A series of attacks waged by the Islamic State against foreign targets has also worried some investors. New textbooks were rolled out last month for millions of school children in Bangladesh between the age of 11 and 13, featuring a segment on transgender. The creators of the textbook hope by introducing eminent transgender figures and the fictional story of a child who transitions, take a female name and goes to live with the transgender community will help nurture acceptance. Wearing bright saris and heavy makeup, many of Bangladesh's transgenders or hijras spend their days collecting donations from people stuck in traffic jams and shopkeepers who give small change in exchange for their lucky blessings. Many live in abject poverty and have no opportunity for a proper education, much less a job. Many are forced to beg or engage in sex work to survive. But new textbooks were rolled out last month for millions of school children between the age of 11 and 13, featuring a segment on transgenders. The creators of the textbooks hope by introducing eminent transgender figures and the fictional story of a child who transitions, takes a female name and goes to live with the transgender community will help nurture acceptance. I wanted to make it inclusive. Uh, to bring them in our mainstream uh, society, we have tried uh, to uh, include these um, contents in our uh, new curriculum and we have piloted it in a, a very small areas and we got a very uh, positive result. However, a large crowd of conservative Muslims recently held a protest at Dhaka's main mosque, saying that transgenders went against norms and that the textbook should be recalled. The government of Bangladesh recognized hijras as a third gender in 2013, but they remain marginalized in a country where same-sex sexual activity is illegal. Officials estimate there are about 10,000 hijras in Bangladesh. But right groups say the figure could be as high as 1.5 million in the country of more than 170 million people. The Buddhist Sherpas in Nepal celebrated Gyalpo Losar festival on Thursday, which marks the conclusion of festivities of the community's traditional New Year and a time to gear up for expeditions. The Sherpas are for their expertise in ascending the sky-notching mountains in the Himalayas.
The Buddhist Sherpas in Nepal on Thursday celebrated Gyalpo Losa festival which marks the last day of the 15-day festivities of the community's traditional New Year and a time to gear up for expeditions for the aboriginals of the Himalayas known for their expertise in ascending the sky-notching mountains. The members of the community in Kathmandu gathered at monasteries to perform rituals and pray for success and blessings. They also sang, danced and feasted around to mark the new beginning. Uh, this is like a beginning the year. After this uh, Lhasa is like starting the expedition seasons and so um, before the expedition we have to uh, pray the April monastery of the Gumba and uh, culturally and uh, and uh, we pray, then we uh, move to the best camp, then everything like prepared there. Then In ancient times, people went to the local spring to perform rituals of gratitude. Offerings were made to water spirits who activated the water element in the area. And smoke offerings were made to the local spirits associated with the natural world. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.